Hello, my name is Chad Sansing. I teach humanities at a Virginia charter school. I work as a tech liaison for the Central Virginia Writing Project. And like some of you perhaps, I used to be a uh, middle school teacher just like you, but then I took an arrow to the knee. I'm captivated by how kids learn from mainstream games. You know, uh, and today I want to share with you some of the wisdom that my students have about game-based learning because it so successfully flips the, uh, the, the structure of authority and control in the classroom. Kids participate in really robust communities of learning around games. Uh, for example, in my class, we have, my class, we have this uh, community of Minecraft engineers, and last week when someone was like, I bet Chad's the best Minecraft player at school, that student was met with snorts of derision. And the kid said, well, do you think Chad falls asleep watching Minecraft videos on his Kindle? Right? I love uh, game-based learning because so much of it happens outside of school where kids can fail forward and get feedback and enter flow states of play and design that last for hours. It's not managed the same way that school is managed. School really is like asking Sims fans to play Dark Souls. Um, <laughs> it limits identity, <laughs> it, uh, it, it limits what the choice, and in that way it really limits the worth of the work to the students. Um, take for example, uh, one of the reasons my students love games, they, they love games because they say, games give me experience and school does not. Anyone familiar with the soft hiss of a creeper knows that the adrenaline spike you get returned from that, you really can't get that anywhere in school outside the principal's office. <laughs> games also give kids a really clear sense of cause and effect, right? Kids who understand systems and games, oh, if I do this, I'll do this, that fails at school because muddy and arbitrary adult judgments, you know, hit kids every day, like unending waves. Take discipline, for example. Games give kids ways to constructively work out of bad situations. Schools do not. The single disciplinary narrative at schools are kids are bad, punish them. And sometimes that's the social contract between teachers and an administrator. Now, my students, um, one of the things that uh, my students have really taught me about is uh, all of this. Glitching <laughs> leads to modding, modding leads to programming. My students uh, are very much invested right now in learning how to code and learning how to program and learning how to make with games. Scratch is one place they go. They like to go here. Uh, one of my students said, um, when I go there and I program, uh, it's personal. It, it's very difficult, but I get to make personal decisions while I'm working there. I have another student who's very interested in uh, Code Academy this year. Uh, and I think the more we put editors and different tools in students' hands, the more there'll be this kind of trickle-down effect where they'll be programming more not just for themselves, but also in their classes. And that's kind of a win-win for us. Many of my students do enjoy uh, modding games. They like to customize their games. And modding is a great way for them to step from playing into programming. One of the best ways that they've found to do it um, is through Minecraft. I don't know if any of you are familiar with Minecraft, but this is a student who really has learned to blur the lines between playing and programming. Inspired by a YouTube video, he went into Minecraft and he made rotating binary piston memory to power a countdown timer. And he's thinking about all of this, you know, in a game. My students are also becoming keenly aware of a form of composition of quest writing as, as a career path, right? Uh, they want to be a part of making games that amount to more, as they say, than click here, read this, uh, gaba gaba blah 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 blah. My students teach me everything I know about design, about programming, about gaming. I watch them at play, and I learn. Um, and this year, I've had a group of girl gamers uh, just show me a ton of stuff about Civilization V, and right now they're teaching one another Minecraft. They've learned to use games to set learning goals for themselves, right? Yeah, I love this. I had the girls pair off and run particular types of government in the game. They all became despots. They settled near iron. They took out the militaristic competition. They did not want an A. They wanted territory and they wanted blood. Because <laughs> kids love to learn, right? Kids want to be in a flow state. They want to have work that matters at school. But our schools right now are simply not adequate to fulfill those needs. And too often they put adults in opposition to those needs. Um, this student uh, really nailed it. It's like, you know, I, this student said, I like playing games because it's not just playing. I can do game-related stuff next to them. So she has put her Skyrim character through the U.S. criminal justice system for all of its crimes, right? Uh, and here she's learned about jury rigging because no Argonian wants an all-Nord jury. <laughs> Neither my kids nor I would say that gaming is, is, is everything. We love our community. We love making, tinkering, art. When we go apart from each other at night, we know we're coming back to share stories with each other the next day. It's just that these stories, the ones that we collect, create, and share together are so much more compelling than the narrative espoused by school. Be compliant, earn your rewards. World doesn't work that way, 
It takes courage to pick up your gifts and use them for others. We all get it. We need schools that get it too. Thanks.